as you may have guessed, that was my friend putting that together. Uh, I didn't, haven't really had time to do puzzles the last month or so. Uh, at any point in your life, you are probably have been asked multiple times, what's next for you? Think about how many times you've been asked some form of that. What's next for you? Whether it's, it's getting out of school, get, getting married, about to retire, there's always this question around what, what's next. And, and I've never met anyone who didn't have an answer, who didn't have a plan, who didn't, even if the plan was, I gotta figure out what the plan is, we always have this sense that, that whatever's next, there, there's a, a structure, there's a plan, there's something, there's a way life should work out. And it's interesting to me that we have this, such an ingrained sense that life should fit together like puzzle pieces, that, that life should fit together uh, in a certain way, a certain structure. It, like, it not only like, not just like we're trying to make it happen, but like it was designed to work that way. We believe this to be the case uh, because we believe that there is a God who, who designed us, who, who put us together, who, who put us together in a certain way. Uh, we are made in the image of God, and we are made to reflect that God, and, and that is our, our design. We Like Father, like Son, here it's, it's happening at a deeper level, like Heavenly Father, like Son or, or Daughter. And so our lives are meant to click together in a certain way, certain pieces fitting in a certain order, in a certain path, so that when you're asked what's next, there, there should be an answer to, to what that, that, that's going to be. And yet, even with that sense that life should click together in, in a certain way, does it? Right. Someone came by uh, the house this week to drop off a gift for Fletcher. Your generosity to him has just been, and to us, has been amazing. Thank you. Um, drop off a gift because this person was lamenting that their family wasn't, you know, those perfect families where you get together for Thanksgiving and all the pieces fit together and, and all the kids, are, uh, no one acts up, all the kids are behaved, all the adults are employed, everyone's in church, there are no problems, everyone gets along, you know, those perfect picture perfect family. And, and we have that, that's the plan, that's the hope, that the family fits together, but, but if, if your family fits together perfectly, maybe it's career, maybe it's job, maybe it's faith, maybe it's church. We have the plan for how we think life should put, be put together, but uh, I've got to ask you, what actually happens? I'll, I'll pick it up, I promise. <laughs> does, does, that seem, does that seem true to you? There, there's the plan, and then, and then the pieces scatter, right? Why is that? Why is that? There's a, there's a story we tell to try to get our minds around why the pieces are scattered. There's a story we've heard many times before about Adam and Eve. They, they make a choice that they could have... Uh, you, you think about how many choices they had made up to that point. Adam and Eve, how many times have they made decisions and, and they'd referred back to the original design. They looked at the cover, so to speak, and say, ah, this is how God has designed us to act, and thus we'll do this. And then there comes this moment where they don't look at the cover. Instead, they make a decision without consulting God, and instead they do what they choose to do. They turn away from God's plan, and they decide a light, nice light snack sounds good. And we have never been the same since. The original human problem seems to be that we have turned away from God, from God's plan, and, and the pieces just don't lock together anymore. They don't snap and fit, and, and, and we have the sense that there should be a structure and a plan and a design to our life, and then life happens and we go, huh. That is not what I expected. Right. Well, Advent begins today, first Sunday of the new church year. And what we are celebrating in, during Advent is the beginning of a new plan, a new beginning, a new approach. It, it, it's, we read how the problem began in Genesis. We read how the problem begins to be solved, how the pieces begin to be put back together. In Luke, in the beginning of the Gospels, we read about John the Baptist being born, and he's going to show up and start hollering out to people to pay attention. The pieces are going to all start coming together, and the last piece is about to show up, and it's all going to click, and you're going to want to be paying attention to this. Now, it took a while to prepare the way. It took a while to get all the pieces together. First, you had to call, God had to call Abraham out of Ur and make him a father of many nations. 
It takes a while to go from one dude to many nations. That does not a short process. After that, you had Joseph who, who shows up and he had to save his family from famine and then forgive them. And so two more pieces of the puzzle show up. Food and forgiveness. You're going to see those a lot in how God works. Then we have Moses who has to show up and he has to spend uh, a long time in the wilderness training how to survive in the wilderness so that then he can lead the people into the wilderness out of Egypt and, and get them away from everyone else so that they can go to Mount Sinai and begin to learn what it's like to be God's people. Not anyone else, not like any other people or any other situation. They are there in the wilderness so they can learn to be God's people. It takes a while to, to teach that. After this, David has to spend many season te seasons tending sheep. I've got to confess, I've never tended livestock. I'm not sure it would be a, a good time. I'm sure it would get boring after a while. But um, he has to tend livestock for season after season after season so that when he becomes king, he does not see his, his, the, the people as subjects to rule over, but as a flock to protect. Elijah and then Isaiah had to endure some rather depressing errors to the king of David, to, to, to King David, so that Elijah could put into place the peace that we call repentance, the idea of you turning back to God. And Isaiah could point out that the, the peace to come is the prince of peace. Without all of these pieces, without God doing all of these things and, and bringing up the nation of Israel and bringing up all the leaders and the prophets, without God doing all of these things, we wouldn't be able to make sense of the New Testament. Without all of these pieces, the last piece that shows up, Jesus, well, you wouldn't have all the other surrounding things, right? It, so, you ever wonder why it took so long to get from Adam and Eve to Jesus? Why did it take so long? Well, it, God had to put in place all of the, these pieces so that the puzzle was ready for this. And, and so here we come to Advent, and we're, we're celebrating the last piece of the puzzle coming together and all the things starting to, to click together. Uh, I have to confess that every time I, I come to Advent, I'm always worried, am I going to have anything to say? Like, it, it's the eternal preacher's fear. You get to the pulpit and you, and you look at everyone and go, ooh, I got nothing for you. Next Tim, uh, That's my fear every Advent. And, and, but there's always something new to say. And it was my friend uh, John who put the puzzle together who pointed out, Andy, puzzles. Let's think of this like a puzzle. And, and, and it got us clicking and thinking and... You know, it does ask some interesting questions when you start thinking about Advent as a puzzle. And um, questions like, do we see ourselves as something bigger? Do we see ourselves as one piece in this bigger puzzle? Do we understand that our lives are all meant to be put together in a certain way, connected to each other, resembling Jesus, following Jesus? Or do we think that we are in charge of our own lives, that we make the decisions, that we make the calls, that we are self-made men and women, right? We are captains of our fate. We are the ones in charge. Do we trust that even if we cannot see all the pieces that God does, do we believe that God has the cover to the puzzle and that by allowing ourselves to be guided by the life of Christ, that's what pulls our lives together in a way that makes sense? To try to put as fine a point of this as possible, how often do we pray, Thy will be done, not mine, as Jesus does in Gethsemane? I, I think about this because th that's what I do often when I'm asked to, to meet people. Like when I meet someone in the hospital or I, I meet someone in a crisis, I mean, we sit down and we pray, Not our will, but Thy will be done. And when we're seeking, we're seeking uh, to do God's will. And then looking at this idea of the puzzle and how does our life fit together and how does this, how does Sunday, how, what I say on Sunday interact and shape what I do on Monday and Thursday and Saturday night, I, I have to confess that I don't always pray that prayer myself that I pray with you. Not my will, but thy will be done, right? If, if I think over the last major decisions I have made, I haven't stopped before all of those major decisions and stopped to say, God, your will, you're in charge of the puzzle. God, your will be done, not mine. And I'd ask you to think about that, that for yourself. Think of the last couple major decisions you made. Did you stop before you made those decisions and pray? Thy will be done. You're the one who's got the puzzle. I'm just a piece. Worth thinking about, right? As I read for this Sunday, as I prayed for this Sunday, 
I, I was convicted that one of the most common idolatries that we practice today is, is the idea that we want to be in control, that we want to uh, do my way or the highway. It was that old Sinatra song, he did it his way. Is that a compliment? Or is that a statement, of, that, is that a problem? Right? I, I think it's a problem. To say he did it his way is to say, that's a, that, that he would, would not interact, he was not part of the bigger picture, he was not part of God's plan, he just had to do it his own way. And I, I think that's a problem. And I think we are tempted to do that ourselves. I know I am. I, I know I am, right? And so Advent reminds us that throughout the Old Testament, God is pulling together all these pieces to put together a bigger picture that we are part of. And that each of us, no one of us is the whole picture, no one of us is in control, no one of us completely understands it all, but that each one of us fits together in the way that we are meant to, that we are designed to, that God intends for us, and that when we submit ourselves to that, it's not he did it his way, but we did it God's way, that that is where we begin to find salvation, that is where we begin to find our hope. For an Advent, this is how we we're seeing how God's going to work. Gathering pieces from afar, putting them together in unexpected ways to build a way for us to find forgiveness and salvation. I, I look forward to the coming month because, because I'm looking forward to the way that we're going to use this idea of puzzles. And, and how do we fit together the pieces of our lives according to God's plan so that we don't look like that. Amen.